Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and this month I'm going over some of my favorite ensembles from the Reactor user library. If you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll come out with new Reactor content at least once a week. Alright, so today I'm here with Skywarp, which is an ensemble I designed myself. It's my favorite ensemble that I designed that is freely available to the public. Um, it's made primarily for creating kind of sound effects and soundscape type noises. Um, so here's a sample of some of my favorite um, snapshots. So one of the things I really like about this ensemble is its simplicity. Um, if I remember correctly, there's only like three elements in the signal path. We have a sign bank, which is making our original, it's creating our original sounds. And then we have a delay module and a reverb, and I think that's it. And what I really like is that we can get these kind of crazy soundscapey effects simply by modulating between uh, some very basic setups using those three elements. All right, so let's take a look at the interface. We have four identical components in the uh, bottom left-hand corner here. And each of these contains controls for the three elements that I just described. So to the left here, we have a sign bank with 64 sine waves. And we can draw in the amplitudes of the individual sine waves just by clicking and drawing on this mouse area here. So on their own, one of these sections is not really going to give us anything that exciting. We just have very simple controls for the delay and feedback in the delay module and the size and depth of the reverb module. There are a lot of variations we can get out of changing the amplitudes in the sign bank, but on their own they're generally not that mm -hmm. exciting. So most of the interesting effects we're going to get are going to come from creating two or more sets of controls and using the XY area in the upper right hand corner here to control the morphing between the various areas. And you can get some very interesting effects by having drastic changes in the size and delay knobs of the control sets being morphed between. And I've also set things up to create very easy and drastic pitch shift effects. So the sine wave with the highest amplitude, so right now this is the first sign in both of our control sets, is going to control the center frequency as well. So if we have different sine waves with the maximum amplitude, when we morph between those two sets of controls, uh, we're going to change the pitch as well. You get an idea of how that works more by uh, playing around with it than listening to me explain it, explain it probably. Wow. 
So it's pretty easy to exploit that part of the synth to create uh, riser effects or falling effects as well. Alright, so next let's look at the modulation network. In the bottom right hand corner here, we have a stacked macro that is full of different modulators and you can scroll between them by clicking on the tabs at the top here. So we have decay envelopes, ADSR envelopes, four LFOs, and a bunch of incoming MIDI data that we can use to affect the values of the different knobs. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the decay envelope, which basically just starts at the incoming gate value and decays down to zero. And I'm going to use it to control the depth of the X position in our morpher. So to connect a modulator to a destination, first we have to click on the label above the modulator that has a little arrow pointing out. And then we have to click on the arrow coming in to the given knob. So you see all the knobs at the bottom have a modulation receiver. Once a modulation source is connected to a destination, you can control the depth of the modulation by right clicking on the knob and dragging up or down. And finally, all of the modulators have little invert buttons at the bottom that allow you to change the direction of the modulation. So you can have the decay envelopes go from zero up to one or from one down to zero, depending on what you prefer. And of course you can modulate the Y value as well. And if you do, you just want to have something set up in the uh, bottom two control sets on the left hand side here. And this will just kind of give us an extreme effect. So the desire to create these kind of morphing effects was uh, originally instilled in me by the official Native Instruments Ensemble scanner, um, and the actual implementation is inspired by FM8. It's with the uh, four corners each relating to a different set of values. All right, and one last thing I'd like to cover is each of the four control sets also has a little FFT button on the far left-hand side that allows you to grab FFT data from any incoming audio and write that into the sign bank amplitudes. So you can catch a small snippet of sound data and store it in the sign bank. It's generally not as exciting as I hoped it would be, but you can still get some cool sounds that way. All right, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please check out our website, and I'll be back next week with another Reactor video.